A while back, I uploaded a video showing a truly incredible sound amplifying device that I made. The circuit was found online and fairly easy to put together. The circuit had the ability to amplify the faintest sounds through concrete walls and floors. What I'm going to do is position the microphone, my left one from my ear, right over the microphone on the camera, and I'm going to take my finger. Now, right now, while I'm doing this, more than likely you cannot hear anything. Watch what happens when I put the earphone next to the camera and do it. Here we go. And I can make that a lot louder. I'm going to go on the concrete now. I'm tapping my finger about two feet away. Now keep in mind, this wood is sitting on top of a concrete floor, and the floor is not perfectly flat. There's an airspace. So when I tap my finger on the concrete, you can still hear it two feet away. Now I'm clawing my nails on the floor and doing nothing else. To this day, I have yet to come across another device that surpasses the sensitivity of that circuit. If you enjoy cool electronics projects, then you're definitely going to want to check out that video. At the end of this video, you'll see an end card that you can click on and it will take you to that video. Also be sure to check out my product review playlist as well as the many other excellent electronics projects shown on this channel. Here I have an extremely useful tool for pinpointing noisy bearings on engines, as well as electric motors, listening for flowing liquid in pipes, pinpointing the location of abnormal noises on or in an engine, listening for clicking of very tiny relays, and much more. It's far better than the cheap tube type stethoscopes sold in stores and online. Keep in mind, though the sensitivity is very good, especially considering the low cost of the unit, it isn't at the level of amplification like the circuit that I made. The circuit that I made, if I was to use that on an engine, because the level of amplification is so high, it would be almost impossible to pinpoint where on the engine the abnormal sound is coming from, because every little sound on that engine would be amplified to such a high degree. This one here, when I open it up, will amplify the sounds, but not to the extreme degree that it's going to be hard to differentiate where the abnormal sound is located. Just like other videos, a link for this product, along with a coupon code to save you some money, has been placed in the video description area. Okay, let's open this up and take a closer look at the device. Alright, as you can see, this electronic stethoscope comes in this very nice vinyl carry bag with the strap. Right here you can see there's two different probes, a long probe and a short. You choose the one that you require if you're going to reach into an engine you're going to use the long one. If you're going to probe something up close, you would use the short one. I'll slide out the long one right here. Open this right here. You can see it's nicely padded. Over here is the actual unit. And you have the headphones and the instruction sheet. So let me just move this out of the way. Okay, this is a better look. Right here is the control unit. Over here is the long probe we'll be using when I give you a quick demonstration. After I explain how it works, as well as take this apart and show you the internal components. And over here is the headset. Now the headset is pretty good. I wouldn't call it spectacular. But when you're only paying 40 something dollars for this entire kit, you cannot expect to have a $100 headset. 
It is very comfortable. It's padded. You can see the top right here is also padded. And over there is a volume switch or volume control. The headset is fully adjustable. Pull it in and out. Now what I did, I like the headset very tight on my head against my ears. So I slid this out and you can see this plastic right here, this curve. All I did was take a heat gun and I gently heated this, both sides, and I put a better bend on it going inward this way and I took a damp rag that was cool, allowed it to cool and the plastic held that shape making it much tighter on my head so you could do the same thing if you feel you have to. The headset plugs in on the bottom of the unit. This unit uses a 9 volt battery right here on the bottom. You slide this door open, you have a 9 volt battery. The dial on the side adjusts the sensitivity or the amplification of the unit. Over here you have a power indicating LED and when you turn on the power that LED should be on. If you notice when the power is on that the LED is not illuminated that's going to indicate that you're going to have to replace the battery. Now on this end over here you can see where that antenna screws onto that brass piece and here's a look at the bottom. I'm going to unscrew this in a minute. The frequency range is 100 Hz to 10 kHz. Input impedance is greater than 15 mega ohm. Ambient noise permitted is 100 decibels. And that's excellent because if you're working in a noisy environment and you want to listen to a motor, this is only going to pick up the sound from that probe up to 100 decibels and it's not going to interfere with the operation of this unit. The size of this unit is 32 millimeters by 50 millimeters by 206 millimeters or one and a quarter inches by two inches by just under eight inches long. And that does not include the antenna and the weight is right around 240 grams or around eight or nine ounces using the long antenna. Over here is your nine volt battery. This is the jack for the headset. You have your circuit board, your sensitivity knob, is connected to a potentiometer. You have multiple nonpolar capacitors on the board. Integrated circuit, two transistors, an electrolytic, and multiple resistors. Now I'd like to zoom in a little closer to this area right over here. Okay, this is the section right here that does all the detecting. Now it's made up of two parts, the larger brass cylinder, and there's a smaller section right here with this little piece, the shorter piece where the antenna screws on or the sensing probe screws on, has what appears to be heat shrink tubing. You have an O-ring that falls into a groove in the molded plastic. Inside here is a molded section in the plastic where this half and this half come together. They simply touch each other and vibrations from the probe are transmitted all the way through into this piece. These two pieces vibrate together and it's picked up in this section right here. Let me take this apart to show you. Okay. You can see just a piece of polished brass. There's the O-ring. The other O-ring sits in this groove right over here. And your antenna screws on right there. So what happens, these two are very close together, but enough space is there that it can vibrate and transfer the sound into this section at the bottom. Now a closer look at this piece right here. Okay. And you can see there's actually an opening in there. So the center pin is isolated from where the black wire is soldered onto the body, which is the negative. And my best guess is that there's a quartz crystal inside here. And as those vibrations are picked up, a very small voltage is generated inside the cylinder. And then this integrated circuit interprets that signal and it drives the speakers inside your headset. More vibration, you'll get higher voltage coming from that quartz crystal and less vibration, you'll have a lower voltage. Let me put this all back together and give you a quick demonstration. 
I'm now going to give you a quick demonstration. Everything is connected up. You can adjust the volume to the headset right here. I like to leave that in the middle and I like to set the sensitivity to the highest setting. So you're going to rotate that all the way up and you can see the power indicator LED. If that is not illuminated, you're going to have to replace the battery. Now one great use is if you have a swimming pool pump motor or a sprinkler motor that's extremely noisy, usually that's the result of a bearing that has gone bad. There's two bearings on the pump. One is located in this end and the other is located at that end. So what you would do is you turn this on with the headset and you would push as close as possible to where the bearing would be, which is right there. And you would listen, and I'll let you hear that in a minute. And then you would compare it to the back one. And when you do that, you'll easily distinguish between which one is the good bearing and which one is the faulty bearing. Right now, I'm going to show you. I'm going to let you hear what I'm hearing. Here we go. If you have an abnormal noise coming from the engine, you can probe all the bearings. This one here is the power steering pump. You can check out the compressor right behind the clutch, the alternator, and you just want to make sure, as well as the tension pulley, that all of those bearings sound nice and smooth when you listen. If all of them are smooth, then you can start probing the engine block in different locations until you get the loudest sound. Then you're going to know you're in the right area. You can also use the electronic stethoscope to probe refrigeration lines. You can hear refrigerant flowing through the tubing. And you can also get an idea of the charge. If you hear a lot of bubbles, that's going to indicate that there's not enough refrigerant in the system. You can also use this to probe hot and cold water lines. If you think you have a leak, place it right against the copper pipe and you'll be able to hear the hissing. And it would sound just like this. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.